So in this jar are about a thousand hungry bed bugs that need an arm and I have volunteered to give them a go but only if I could get a tattoo out of the deal so as you can see a nice outline of a bunny rabbit we're gonna turn that upside down on my arm we're gonna see if we can get a nice bunny rabbit welt made by all the hungry bed bugs that you can see cruising around in there all in stars very cool what we strange and small just don't do. We're going to put them onto my arm and as we send it this way we should start getting some hungry, oh there they go I can already feel them tickling my arm as they stick in it's not painful As they start realizing it, you'll start seeing them going down instead of up. My wife was super excited. She's excited about you uh, getting a new tattoo. Yeah, she was. She's way excited. It's it's just like regular tattoos. Once you get one, you just crave having another one done. I don't know if I've craved it. <laughs> I haven't had a cool tattoo yet. So you, so you might ask why we'd be keeping a colony of bed bugs, and uh, this colony is actually being used to um, train up a bed bug sniffing dog. So much like you see dogs that sniff out drugs or snakes that the USDA and different uh, uh, airports use, um, there's also dogs that can be used to sniff out bed bugs in hotel rooms and it makes it so that you can target your insecticide uh, applications and other applications um, which is good in sort of the green revolution uh, that we're having in in the United States right now so my amazing videographer right now is Terry Randolph and, and she's the one that is uh, training up Bob the Beagle uh, as we speak and so this goes towards his betterment so to speak do you have anything to say on that? He's doing a great job and should be ready to certify by the end of the summer. Nice. Good. I don't know if you can see some of those big fat red blobs moving up. Some of the bigger Instar ones are finally getting full. Focusing in on that. I'm doing a very good job here. You can see them moving. Yeah. Kind of. Oh yeah, you can see them moving around in there. Big fat red balls. They were all little white and light colored and now they're big fat red nasties. All filled up with my blood. Bed bugs aren't known to transmit any human pathogens, so uh, AIDS, hepatitis, uh, uh, different things like that, they're not known to transmit. Too, which is pretty funny. So here are all the bed bugs. You can see them in there. All the big, fat, happy bed bugs. They've been feeding on my arm. I'll spin this around a little, try and get some good light on it. Move these around. Very cool. Look at that big old guy right there. Huge! He's a little scrawny guy. Now he's all filled up with my blood. They're moving around. My finger was on the top. They could feel my finger. They were going for my finger. Wow. A thousand fat, happy, all of them in that crease right there. Bed bugs. Very cool. Entomologists are special, special people. So this is about two hours after having about a thousand bed bugs bite on me that we were using to uh, feed up for Bob the bed bug beagle that he uses it. So you can see the nice uh, pattern of the bunny rabbit that's starting to come through. Uh, it's probably going to go away tomorrow and then in two days it'll really swell up. I get a good reaction after about two days. So it's been about 24 hours since I let uh, Cymex lectularius, otherwise known as the bed bug, uh, about a thousand of them feed on my arm. So if you're a real bug nerd, you can tell the difference between the bed bug, which you can see right here, and you can see it has nice, really short hairs, shorter than the width of the eye, and then a really narrow wing pad area right here, so that the wing pads are narrow at that inner margin. And you can tell it against its friend, the bat bug, by the hairs are much wider than the length of the eye 
and it has a very straight and wide um, inner margin of the wing pads. So this one here is our friend. Not a very easy way to see it, but there is our friend, the bed bug, hanging out. And it's the one that had just decided to eat on my arm. I have a thousand of them on my arm yesterday in the name of training Bob the bed bug beagle. If you remember yesterday, it's been about 24 hours, you could see a nice bunny rabbit pattern, but the swelling has has gone pretty big. You can see it's just a huge lump. There's my regular arm completely lumps out right there and it's just a huge pad of it right now. So we'll check back in in 24 hours. So we're now at about 48 hours after the uh, bites of the bed bugs and uh, I don't know if you guys can really see but the uh, bunny rabbit pattern has basically blistered up now and uh, has uh, so I've got basically like pus filled blisters gotta remember that this is kinda atypical for a single bed bug bite but when you have a thousand or so on you at one time you get that nice blistered appearance so 48 hours afterwards uh, it's biting the itch um, level on a scale of 1 to 10 is probably a pretty uncomfortable maybe seven and a half or eight so right now we're at about 72 hours um, since the bed bugs bit and you can see that most of the swelling has gone away uh, the hives are still huge uh, but you can definitely tell that it's a a nice bunny rabbit tattoo so to speak you can see little ears, little cotton tail there's a little semicircle around the side where I didn't have the stencil exactly right but very cool so 72 hours after um, just a lot of high V bumps um, itch levels back down last night it was like about an eight and a half or nine today it's uh, down to maybe like a three so very cool so it's been about two weeks or so since uh, I let the bed bugs feed on my arm. You can tell that there's pretty much nothing left um, as far as scarring or scabbing or anything like that of the of the bunny rabbit tattoo. Um, sometimes I get like some itches, but uh, not horrible. Um, it went away pretty quick um, after about the first week. Uh, what I want to emphasize is is what you've just seen. Uh, there was a thousand, and I know I repeated that a lot of times, but I, I want to emphasize that it, it's it's atypical of of seeing a single bed bug. Uh, and a matter of fact, a high percentage of uh, of the population uh, doesn't show any reaction to individual bed bug bites. So you may not know that you've been bitten at all. So um, it's atypical, but it's it's what can be done, or what you can see if there's a large population um, of bed bugs feeding in a single area. And that's another thing they don't they don't usually feed in groups while a many may come out at night. Um, is, is what is what you usually see is is one here, one there, and then when they're done feeding, of course, they go back to the cracks and crevices. So that's why you don't often see them um, on your body the next morning. And so a lot of people at hotels and and whatnot wouldn't even know that they had been bitten. Uh, but then they're in their pajamas or something like that. And then they put their pajamas in their suitcase, and then they bring those bed bugs home, and they may leave their suitcase by their bed for a while, and then the bed bugs um, crawl out of the suitcase and into your headboards, and then feed on you at night, and then they can increase their population that way, and that's a typical way of getting them at home. Um, a good control if you are traveling uh, a lot is is when you bring your stuff home, uh, bring it home in bags, or take take it all out of your um, suitcase in the garage and put it immediately into the dryer. Um, they only need to push past about 115 to 120 degrees uh, for 15 or 20 minutes so your longest hottest dryer cycle will kill all life stages of the bed bugs and, and sort of uh, take that worry out. Uh, hope that uh, you enjoyed this part of the Bugs That Eat You video series. Uh, thousand bed bugs feeding on my arm.